let's just do it. Amen. God told Moses to send spies. God wanted Israel to know that the land he promised them was a real land. Yes. He wanted them to know that that was the land of resource and provision. God wants us to know about the blessings that he has for us. His promises uh, that he, he has for us are real. They're not in a blind faith mode. God has proven himself through Israel and through many generations. Even the early church. What God promises he shall accomplish in every one of our lives. Our problem is that many times we focus on the challenges of life and not in the champion of our faith. Many times we challenge ourselves. In this life we are challenged and we are engaged. Hallelujah. And we are defeated. Why? Because we have not even seen the enemy. But regardless of the fact we we downgrade our faith and we begin to challenge ourselves and we begin to trust more in the, in the challenges of life than the things of God. We need to remember and we have to remember that while the enemy is like a roaring lion, hallelujah, he cannot kill us with a roar. He cannot kill us with a shout. We have to understand that while we are challenged, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. The Bible says 12 spies were sent. Ten spies came back. Yes. Spineless, not willing to walk in faith. These were those that doubted God. These were those, uh, amen, that said they couldn't get done uh, in their day. Their negative report uh, moved upon the people of the community with fear and tears. The negative report, uh, amen, began to creep on the community and they began to re rebel against the ordered uh, leadership of God. How many of you know that anytime God gives us a promise, the devil will try to disturb the promises of God. He will try to fill our heart with fear and negative thoughts before we possess the land. I don't know about you, but when God promises something, amen, the enemy will knock on our door like he's never has before. He will try to scare us. He'll try to make us run through the caves. He'll try to put us out because he knows that the blessing of God is coming our way. He'll try to make us talk negative. He'll try to raise up the naysayers, those that say it cannot be done, and begin to preach a sermon of doubt and discouragement among the community. It doesn't matter if you're not discouraged, but if you're around the people that talk negative, it begins to resonate in your mind and in your heart, and you go home with the thought of negativity. You don't have to be negative to be negative in the realms of negativity. Amen. You can hang out with people. That's all they talk about. They cannot do it. And they cannot. And I'm not able. I'm, I'm incapable. And then you may not believe it in the moment. But before you turn it in in bed, you have the thought of negativism. Hallelujah. We got to be careful. Because the naysayers never see the possibility. They are defeated by the roar of the enemy. They are conquered not by the devil, but by their own fear. They give a thousand reasons why it cannot be done. Even if God said he will help us through it, they still create reasons of why it cannot be done. They see, the, they see things like, I believe for every drop of rain, there's a flower that grows. They see, they see things, well, I think I can, I hope I can, uh, maybe God will show up. I'm not really sure, amen. I, I, I think, uh, amen, God is able, but I really don't know, uh, amen, uh, hallelujah, I always try to tell my kids, uh, you better not say you, 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 you maybe can, either you're going to do it or go sit down, amen. I always tell my kids, uh, I don't want to hear that I can't 
can do it. If you can't do it, go to your room and pout about it over there because we need to have the right attitude to get the job done. Hallelujah. They always take time to stop, amen, and talk about the negative things of why it cannot be done. The characteristics of somebody that doubts God it begins with doubt. The Bible says 12 men went into Canaan and 12 men came out. Yeah. All 12 came back with a testimony that God's promises were real. Yeah. But there was a group of people who will often say that they do believe in God, but they never see the promises of God. Yeah. They, but they doubt that he will do what he said he would do. Yeah. They doubt it. Amen. And when you begin to doubt, trust me when you, I say this, when you begin to doubt, your worship is affected. Your praise is affected. Because really, how can you praise a God that you are doubting? How can you worship a God that you're hitting butts about it? So you affect your worship and you affect your faith because you're starting to doubt the God that given you They begin to doubt. They claim to worship the same God that created the universe and called life into existence. Uh, but they doubt for their healing. Uh, they doubt for their provision. Uh, they doubt for their own. Uh, see, you can worship God. Uh, hallelujah. And praise God all you want. Uh, but because you praise Him doesn't mean you believe. Amen. You can still doubt. I don't know if you've been in a group of people that, uh, and then inside of you, you know you're scared of heights. You don't want to go up there. But because the whole group is going, you're going to uh, just be able to get in with the group. Amen. Inside you, you're shaking. Uh, inside of you, you know in your mind, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. And that's how it is with church folk. Amen. You can worship God. You don't even believe. You don't even trust. You don't even uh, believe he can do it. But you worship because you're in an atmosphere of those that worship the Lord. All, twin, all 12 men testified that Canaan was everything God had promised that it would be. They said stuff like this. We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And there is its fruit. We have evidence of the land. They have been brought back proof of the fruitfulness of the land. They weren't, uh, they weren't done talking yet. The ten of those that doubted confirmed nevertheless the people who dwell in the land they begin to say are stronger their cities are big they're fortified they're large moreover hallelujah our enemies live there the bible says that Caleb got up and quieted the people and encouraged 